Welcome back to the Free Play Arcade Podcast. We're, we're keeping that. That take is live, and this podcast right now is live. Um, we are back here at the Free Play Arcade headquarters, coming to you to talk about a kind of fun project that we did this past February. So uh, if you've been around the channel a while or you know any of these, you know, like... Um, Variant white guys sitting here at this podcast table. Um, Hello, <laughs> we, I'm we are. Uh, uh, we've been talking about high scores and world records for a long time, and uh, dragging Twin Galaxies at every turn. Um, and so for February, <laughs> one of the things we did, and and my whole this was an idea I had, and it was a dumb idea, um, but I really fell in love with it. So I wanted to break a world record at free play. Not me personally playing, but have someone break a world record every single day at free play. Um, and one of the, the keys there was to kind of show that, you know, we probably shouldn't be playing for records. There's a lot of records out there. There's a lot of rare games. Um, and you could probably find world records. Anyone listening to this podcast right now, if they wanted to be a world record, could. A uh, world record holder could. Because there are plenty of unclaimed world records. Um, stuff like that. So uh, I thought this would be really easy. But I also thought it would be a great um, thing to do to kind of re-energize the retro community around free play, which actually, I think that point worked pretty well. Um, and we'll get to it. Because I thought, uh, one of the complaints that we have um, from our communities, and I, I think it's totally legitimate, it's just hard to solve, is that retro games at free play often don't have the kind of event attention um, that I think some people wish they did. Now, we have tried. We have been... You know, like, that's one of the things. No one has tried harder. We've had $2,500 um, retro world championship challenges or whatever. I think we couldn't call it retro world championships because that was taken by someone else. But something similar um, where it was just retro games. And I think Doug Galt won it. Is that yes, right? Yes, um, that's right. So, like, we've done stuff. We've thrown money at it. And, and ultimately what we find is it is a small community. Mm -hmm. And it's also a community uh, where everyone has their game. Um, very few people are like a generalist at 80s arcade games. There, it's, there are some, and they're just general gamers who are all really good at uh, video games. But uh, you pick a game to run an event on, and you're going to have the very few people that like that game show up. Um, so instead, what I tasked um, Chris with <laughs> through Arthur as like the uh, assistant, Josh, everyone here at this table kind of had to get involved in it um, because we were looking for... Um, games and players to go run on in February and break some world records. Um, and so we're going to dive right into it. We're going to um, jump in. So I announce it. And then February 1st, we had to start breaking records. So what happened on February 1st? Well, February 1st was Pinball Monday because it was the first Monday of the month. We went out to Denton early. Uh, it may have been the Pinball League. You know what? It was, it, was, it was a Pinball League. So we went out to Denton early. Garrett Shahan, who was on the podcast uh, previously uh, and also beat the world's number one former former number one player at pinball, uh, he's known uh, mostly for James Bond pinball. So he ran James Bond pinball, and we were just tackling pinball speed run world records. And we actually we did James Bond pinball, and uh, Savannah Archuleta broke some world records. Uh, Clark McCoy broke some world records. Uh, I technically broke some world records. Um, yeah, to your point of anybody could do it, uh, we took all the vacant records we could find and just went up and down the list, smashing them all uh, on Garrett's uh, carpool pinball stream. And, yeah, I guess that's the, the thing is, like, every game that has a score can have a record. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, one or of the, even not, if you want to run speed runs. Right. Well, yeah, and and so and like one a of the game things without a score just beat the game. That we have kind of been mean to Twin Galaxies about is that they are there trying to be the record keepers of every video game ever. Mm -hmm. um, and on previous podcasts, uh, you can kind of hear us talk about like how we would try to solve that. And we've 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 tried to tackle that a lot, but. What we do know is there are plenty of world records that are generally unclaimed and available. And so, yeah, y'all showed up and just started smashing stuff on pinball. Yes. Um, I don't think we submitted any of those, I assume. I left it up to them even, right. in all these cases. Even not just unclaimed. Uh, Twin Galaxies themselves, like, we aren't really cheating the system here. They themselves differentiate records between MAME and Arcade. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of arcade games that have MAME records submitted <laughs> and zero arcade records on our legitimate hardware. So 
you know, we had the ability to set, did literally do anything because on legitimate hardware, yeah, which we no have. There's no record that's set. And then it's, it's right. the world record. You get the record. Right. Yeah. yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> some of the clowning they were doing on pinball that day is, you know, they would have me play first, set, set a world record, and then the pros would just immediately smash it. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, that was actually, and that's that's, that's one good. of my favorite things to do on these things where there's no claimed record is to have every player who plays that day basically break a world record. And the next person is going to break the right. world record, and you just, you're, it's it, it's a lot of fun. And um, and, and there there were some uh, pinball speed run records that were were established. We beat some of them, but also there were some that were quite good. Uh, beating wizard modes in a in a very timely fashion is uh, is quite an accomplishment. And of course. Pinball score records are mm. well. If you want to, uh, maybe maybe we're talking about a hundred hour game. If we're doing a pinball record, we or can, you can know, the coil I, last that long. I slide the glass down a little bit and give myself unlimited sure, points. Sure, sure, yeah, um, neat. Because because that's the the thing about pinball is um, not only are the records not really super cared about, and that's we and I don't want to be mean because we have a lot of people who are going to listen to this um, who are in our community who do care about pinball high scores but it's i've always you know it's this, it goes back to that same thing you should care about your score versus the last time you played that game or you know your overall score like you should be working on getting better you shouldn't really care about other people's scores because there's all sorts of situations that can make that complicated but i do know there are pinball players out there who don't like tournaments anymore they don't like the competition except for trying to get a high score on a table um and so i do know that that's out there i know that there are people that care about it um but when it comes to a world record, I feel like it's just too easy to cheat on pinball. Yeah. Like, I can think of a million different ways. Um, yeah, and there's hundreds of different settings, right. too, and, and they, they very much play into things. And even things that are competition legal, or what is competition legal. Um, yeah, when I'm running pinball tournaments, uh, if, it's, if it's really, if it's Garrett and his 50 equally talented friends playing in this tournament, we're taking the post out of the table. Right. We're literally making it that hard. Well, yeah, and if y'all want to go check out a, a pinball podcast, go check out the interview we did with Garrett, um, mm-hmm. and it'll really help you understand kind of uh, what it, what it, how high level high level players think, but also um, how free play works to make it harder on them. Yes. Um, how our tournaments are not designed to to be easy; they're designed to end at a certain period of That's time. It. Yes, and we are tra- not designed necessarily to be hard. It's just right. we need to close and yeah, have relationships. So we are basically. <laughs> training pinball players at free play to deal with the hardest possible settings at the heart on these tables. Mm. Um, and so if they go to other places, they generally do really well because they, they're used to it being brutal. But on February 1st, there was another world record broken. Arthur, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you did it. Yes. Uh, all right. So I did a couple of things at free play Dallas that afternoon because there were a couple of uh, emptiest records or low records. Uh, there's a ex Arcadia game version of To Hope Ever Cherry Blossom, and I did one playthrough of that, got a record, because I'm um, the greatest that's ever existed, apparently. But also, we have a really super, one of the rarest games that exists in the world, Darius, um, the original one from the 80s that is a three-monitor-wide uh, three uh, shooter that you can play two players simultaneous on, and it has two monitors... Wait, two monitors are oh, yeah. are on the the low end with mirrors, and the the other monitor in the middle is kind of sticking out, and it's just a really awesome game. And it was when I was a kid, they had it at the local putt putt near me, and that was where I sadly learned that sometimes games cost two quarters, not one quarter. <laughs> when I only had one quarter, I've always wanted to play that game, and now that we have it, I've actually done so quite a few times. Uh, so I took a stab at the world record because it's pretty low because, you know, it's a very rare game. I think there are two others that we know about that exist. Um, that are available to play. Uh, there are a few others, um, obviously, that I know about in p- private collections. But uh, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest, almost all of them are broken to some degree because those monitors are not normal monitors. They're not the mo- you're not going to be able to just go find uh, easily a 15-inch monitor in today's world. So... Um, yeah, most of them that I know in collections are broken in some way or have been converted into other stuff or the, uh, and not being mean, but there's the galloping ghost kind of weird custom stuff that they've been doing that is, I don't like that much. But, um, so there, there are a couple others, um, that you could play, but right now the world record held here. What we're saying is 
uh, go and play it right now while you have the <laughs> well, yeah. Please yes. do. Yeah, well, that, that, that's actually, if there's one thing that I've learned, is that opening an arcade in 2015, there are definitely issues that we've run into in terms of keeping games on the floor that uh, I didn't expect. Um, certain games that are just going to be brutally difficult to stay on the floor and then brutally difficult to sort parts from. And when you have a 1,000 plus on the floor, things get really hard. So... Um, yes, Darius right now. Dallas, go. So I, I played a single player, and I got uh, I got about a couple million points, and the high score was a little bit higher than that. And I feel like I could have done it, but I looked out of curiosity what the two-player score was. The combined two-player score was under 800,000. So I grabbed the tech from the back room and said, hey, hit the start button over here and play if you want. <laughs> 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 and we played until we had 10,000 more points of that and then just gamed over it because at this point in time we were open, it was running late, and I had other things to do. But world record on some of the rarest arcade hardware that exists. Please come check this game out and beat my score. My score is uh, about 100,000. So They're falling left and right, right? So yeah. like that was the thing. We So we're talking one day, February 1st, multiple world records broken. Um, and... Um, and I guess what I would posit is while there are games that are more, like, prestigious or well-known, there's not really a big difference between one world record to another, um, given that it's still a world record. So, um, we and, and to be clear, some of these, we did allow the players to submit, as you were saying, but we weren't going to actively submit to any um, governing body or anything like that. Cause it, Whenever I had the option, I would do the whole record on startup, on boot up, show the uh, the dip switch settings, uh, then not have any cuts between the gameplay and your recording, and you know just do do it the way that they would do it if they were going to to submit. But as we didn't really have much intention to submit because it's Twin Galaxies, who cares? It's twenty twenty four. Uh, I didn't submit any of mine anyway. Uh, I, I certainly didn't submit any, although I did make recordings for the people who... I, I mean, I made recordings and streamed all of them uh, to the extent that I could. And there were some few, there were a few challenges with some of the games that we, we did uh, record attempts at. But yeah, stream them. So I, I still have video and, and you know we could submit them now if we cared. And I really, really don't. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, we um, so we did get a little bit of um, kind of fame in the arcade world when and we, we've mentioned her numerous times in the podcast. She's been on the podcast, Lauren Featherstone. Mm -hmm. um, she broke the Tapper world record, which was um, at the time uh, a really fun thing that we did a free play. We got national press. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there. Are, if you if you search Tapper, Tapper world record, Lauren Featherstone no longer has the world record because that is the downside, right, of having to post the entire Records stream be broken. Um, on the internet for everyone to look at. Uh, the strategy that she had developed independently is now the strategy, and mm -hmm. now it's just a how long can you stand kind of record more than anything else, um, which is, you know, it's very impressive that she came up with that. Of course, Tapper was a game that was older than her. So um, we were pretty into records back then, but it obviously things have, the us caring about um, getting the credits has gone quite downhill. So February second, day two, um, I see a, uh, a yeah, we, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. So we are are fortunate enough to play with one of the greatest speedrunners of all time, Two Chan. Uh, she is a member of the Killer Queen League and has been featured at Games Done Quick uh, multiple times, and uh, she's got <laughs> Sonic tattoos and um, is very, very, very good at all versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. Maybe not all versions, but uh, certainly the first one where she had the speedrun record. Not currently the world speedrun champion of Sonic, but several times was. And uh, we had her playing the Megatech version of Sonic, and we streamed that one <laughs> as well. Which that's, that's a drastic control change there. It's dramatic, yes. <laughs> and, and she was up for the challenge. Uh, she, we, I timed it on February second, so that was uh, it was a day when we were doing a Killer Queen uh, event. Um, so I had her come. The Derby Devils were out, and had her come early, and uh, we filmed her and just had it going while we're setting up for the Killer Queen stream. And she just got to go as much as she wanted. Now I, I missed this. Was this glitchless or was this glitched? Go. I I do don't. you remember roughly what her time was? Well. She, Spoiler: She she didn't get it, so it's vacant. But she's 
you know, as many of the speed runners are, like they're they're start over, start over, start over, start over. Uh, work on specific tech, and she's working with the with the mm -hmm. control scheme as well. Yeah. Now she's very capable of it, but she just got really obsessed with uh, the <laughs> the labyrinth labyrinth zone. Yeah, so it was just like restart it, restart it, restart yeah. it. And there actually was a complete. I'm just curious, like I, I got feel the whole like thing on video, I feel way, like hours. glitchless. If you're a glitchless runner, switching to Megatech would be hard, but not as hard. I imagine pulling off the glitches, which are, if you've never seen a glitched Sonic speed run, <laughs> any of the, about, like the first three games, or actually about, like, any Sonic game, modern Sonic, Sonic Adventure, all the glitches are just buck wild. Are you talking about the one where they fly above the stage? Like I haven't well, watched yeah, extensively. Zip through the walls. Yeah, yes, they just zip through all the walls and stuff. And just like, I imagine that those glitches are gonna be so much harder to pull off on right. the Mega Tech yeah. control. She was definitely doing frame perfect stuff. And that yeah. was like part of, the, so for her having played it for, who knows how much time did she actually put into it to actually get there, uh, a significant amount. Um, she was just, you know, obsessed with these single frame things that she could do, and she was doing them. Like, it's on video. It's awesome. It's really awesome. Like, the techniques themselves were, were really cool, but she didn't actually finish the game all the way through, so technically not a world record broken. Still vacant. Go beat Sonic the Hedgehog once at Free Play Arlington, and you've got it. <laughs> and, yeah, that is, it is kind of funny, right? Because we're, it, like, thinking about in 2013 or something, like, a different time, and being like, you have to go break the uh, the world record on Sonic on Megatech, or you have to go break the Darius two-player world record <laughs> on the original. Or, and it's just like, this is impossible. No one has that. Um, so it's really cool that we do. Um, but it also did definitely give us uh, an advantage. Uh, and she normally runs Glitchless. Um, and she is well known for being one of the riskiest of all the speedrunners. She likes to take absurd risks. Um, that will jeopardize her ultimate um, uh, run times. But the payoff is super sweet. And w watching her do it is is I I do stop down and watch. It's it's incredible. <laughs> I've seen her, I've seen her do it in really odd circumstances as well, including um, doing it on emulators, right? That are have have lag and stuff, just right. to see if she could pull off a one frame link on something that's like bad. <laughs> and so then. Um, she never turns in. She never finishes. I assume she has to go play Killer Queen. No, or yeah, she do, she doesn't. Although she 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 does many incredible things. Maybe you know the the best <laughs> the best skill display of this entire month. But uh, but no, never actually beats the game. Oddly. And then on the third, we have a probably much harder <laughs> world record. <laughs> Oh, to yes, beat yes. the elevator action run, um, who did that? What was that about? So that was that was the first of Edward Pan's uh, world record attempts. He's one of the most talented players that we have in the area. He's our current Donkey Kong record holder. Uh, so he's beat Billy Mitchell's score that Billy Mitchell put at uh, Free Play Arlington. Um, so he's that caliber caliber of player. Elevator action has been the new hotness for him since they uh, moved it around in Free Play <laughs> Richardson. And uh, yeah, he was, he was, <laughs> he was a fixture at the bar near the bar. Like, why do we have to walk around this guy? Um, but that was Ed practicing, and uh, yeah, he um, he tried it out. He was trying many different things. We were trying to figure out if it was a legitimate world record. Trying to find video of it. It's very hard. It was it was hard for me to like pull up video of a world record attempt just to see it. Um, to what it would be like, but uh, he gave it his, his best shot. Did not get the world record. Well, do you know if it, was he running on normal difficulty, hard difficulty? The absolute. So this is what we did. We looked up the Twin Galaxies specifications for um, if we're shooting for a Twin Galaxies world record. That is, we would look for their specific dip switch settings, and then make sure that we did set it to those dip switch settings, with the exception of if they banned free play. Uh, we would uh, <laughs> we would go ahead and put in free play because I really really want to come back to you and say we broken a very prestigious world record, but because it, it we doesn't had count free cause... play, it doesn't count. And just watch you uh, go. I just want to see the whole podcast series on that. Right. Frankly. Well, and and the the interesting thing about um, elevator action is that there are two main records, which is the normal difficulty and the hard difficulty. Um, there have been people grinding on MAME at hard difficulty to try to beat these referee-verified scores on hard, um, and haven't. 
So um, we have two old records um, from 2002, so that's not that old in, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, on hard. But the interesting thing is they were set up the same day on the same system, and I guarantee you the settings were wrong. <laughs> like, I just, that's that's exactly what happened. Um, these were This was set to easy on accident, and they put it in hard or something, or, you know, the point of crew, it doesn't matter. Or the, the game was literally broken, and the point of crew would happen faster. Like, all of these things are possible. Um, but whenever I see something like that and I see all of these people desperately trying to beat it and they just can't, um, especially using MAME and just running over and over and over, it seems unlikely that the, the at least the hard difficulty record is real. Ed's, the, got, Ed's got some meat on the bone for his game, so I, I could see him uh, making a harder run at it, at it in the future. All right, so... Um, yeah, that's so that that's like a that's a hotly contested um, for years kind of world record, um, which I was that was actually my hope when we started doing this was that we'd have some that were just kind of gimmies or some you can just kind of only break it free play because where else are you really gonna where else are you gonna find them in the condition necessary too like that's there's Very nothing worse true. than going to uh, and I don't mean to throw any arcade under the bus but I was going to a bunch of arcades in Austin and I found some rare games. Not a single one of them had a control that worked, like it, completely, and it, it was it was hard. Um, it was you know it was the kind of thing where you pull up on the joystick and the stick comes out of the game, and um, it was crazy too. It was set to coin play, so like how did that even happen? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but the next day, uh, Arthur, this one was you. Do you know do you know what happened on the fourth? Garo Bark of the Wolves, so a game you've never played before. I've never heard of this game. <laughs> no, I'm a I'm a big fan of this game. Uh, one of the Evo champion. <laughs> this is not a true statement. There was never an a, Evo a side Evo. tournament superstar belt holder. Um. But either way, so my score was eight hundred fifty three thousand, and it wasn't a particularly good score. I ended up with uh, uh, mostly double S's, few triple S's, no miracles, and uh, this was on the recording that I did, and. It, Mark of the Wolves is kind of funny. The The AI is not exactly great. It has a bunch of things it's likely to do. If you ever jump over the, the guy and the, the other guy, ha- the, the character you're jumping over has a multi-hit normal, they'll almost always do that right before you hit the ground. So uh, you have a, a window of like seven frames to hold back to just defend, but when you're landing from a jump, it's 14 frames, whatever. So you do crossover, jump, just, 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 just defend, and then go into stupid combo. Power charge, fierce faint, fierce super. Anyway, you do that a few times and you'll kill everyone, but otherwise, uh, if you have them in block stun, even if you give them a move that has a whole large gap where they get out of block stun, they'll keep blocking. So Terry can do like a fierce faint, crouch fierce into his power charge elbow, and that's a block stun infinite until they get guard crushed, and then you get to kill them. Really, really easy game to exploit the, the AI on. But I didn't do that well. I got 853,000 and didn't even beat the game. I got two Kane. I got him to the second round, and then he killed me twice. And I'm like, eh, that's enough. I'm I'm good. I'm just going to turn this stuff off. But then I decided, you know what? After I'd already turned off the camera, I'm going to play it again. And I did, and I beat the game. I scored like 1.4 million. But it's all irrelevant because Twin Galaxies has no record for beating more, uh, Garo Mark of the Wolves, one of the super coolest fighting games ever. So it doesn't matter. I can submit that right now and have the world record. And it's a very easy world record to beat. In fact, I think that Free Play's personal world record, uh, Free Play Arcade's personal record is much higher because I know that <laughs> I had over a million points at one point. So well, I, mean, I don't I, even think I have it anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of really cheesy stuff I can do on Mark of the Wolves against the computer to, to really grind out. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Fr- so the, the, the settings, though, I looked it up. Mark of the Wolves has no scores ever submitted, um, but they do have rules, which I think is really That's interesting. That's the most hilarious thing about Someone it. Someone set the rules for the game, and then no one has ever... T- so uh, the only thing that I was interested in is... So these are the rules. Um, demo sound on. I don't know why that's relevant, but you it's, better have it on. It's not. So therefore, it would I, have never counted. No, it did because I, I took a, my Neo Geo and I had... Oh, you, you did. <laughs> you, you made sure that... The, um, Just in case I was going to submit it, I decided not to because I actually don't care about <laughs> putting a Twin Galaxies world record up. But I did have all the dip switch settings correct, all the, the so, in-game service menu settings. Really quick, I want to go ahead and say what I, my dream is for a game like this. My dream is that we do everything right and we submit it to Twin Galaxies with a score of like 20. And then we get the world record for a score of like 20. 
And, and then we, went, then we wait again. a month and we go through all of the verification again and we get a score for 1,000. And like slowly. <laughs> Why wait a month? Just spend an afternoon right, getting just, incremental. Just, just, just submit like 35 verifications in order. <laughs> and, um, it's just, I mean, yeah, no, I, I really thought it would, it would really clog up the system. Um, and uh, so let's see, your difficulty level eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we have? What's the normal? So eight is the hardest, but the normal is by default. I want to say it's five, but mm-hmm. it, but the AI is exploitable, so it doesn't really matter that's, to begin with. That's so weird because I feel like normally the the rules are like default settings. Right. You would you would think that that would be what they wanted, especially back in the old days, because you, you're going to try to play whatever is in front of you, and which is just, why they have dumb stuff like demo sound on there. Like I feel like a lot of the ones that I looked at, it was just like. Here's the settings that you need to have, and then it says at the bottom, these are the default dip switch settings. Right. You don't need to change anything. And I feel like they just copy and paste the default dip switch settings, which is why you end up with stuff like demo sound has to be on, where right. it's like that affects nothing. Right. Or yeah, or I, uh, there was a game where it's like technically, we'll get to it later, but like technically my high score is not admissible because uh, you have to have the dip switch that reverses the screen, which flips it upside down. Right. You have to have that off. But it, if it, it depends on how your monitor is mounted and, right. or, or how the wires from the tube are plugged in. If I had had that off, I would have been playing the game upside down. So, <laughs> like, who cares? Because that's the one that matters. Right. Yeah. The orientation of the screen is all that anyone should care about. So 1.4 million is now the official well, No, 853 tier? because... Uh, oh, you don't have the, uh, the video. Yeah. Got it. But I mean, I could make a lower one too. Who cares? <laughs> well, I, I know. I do think it would be really fun to pick a game and then basically give everyone at free play, all staff, a world record at one point in their lives. Um, that's verified by Twin Galaxies, the ten at Ankaru. Um, next up, <laughs> Chris. It looks like you headed out to play some Tekken. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we had a, another game planned that day. It fell through. So this is one of those games that I can give a good good college try at um i the world record is right now a minute and 10 seconds and some change is that uh, finishing the game that's finishing speed the run higher game so it's not a it, is it in this, in this case, or is it just uh, it's just arcade uh, however there that, is no that, score that right? in game time in game time in game time, in game time. so oh, it yeah, would be significantly yeah, right. more right right and this is the legit score it's not technically a speed run um although it's a time attack right um, weirdly, uh, the dip switch settings have to be set to ultra hard, and there's a certain um, timer that has to be put on, which is really bizarre because you're you're hurrying anyway. So like, right. it doesn't it's, matter. It's, it, it it seems like every other arcade game, it's default settings, and every fighting game, it's like you have to put it on the hardest difficulty. Well, I will tell you, it's much easier to do this on ultra hard for Tech and Tag tournament because. Uh, Most random is in chaos. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, the AI <laughs> goes straight to the hard mode, which you can then account for, um, and then and then exploit it quicker. Right. So it's easier that way. Um, I I remember back in the day I was doing this in sub one minute. Uh, I don't care if you believe me or not. Um, I was hitting. Uh, a, excuse me. The world record was clearly a minute ten. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, so I, I, I had confidence that I could grind it out if I, if I had the time. This is between free play pinball league uh, doing uh, uh, another one and then uh, pinball Monday. So I was a bit exhausted. Um, I, I got to around two minutes. And the thing I remember about this day, other than like thinking how bizarre it is that we put it to an easier mode, technically <laughs> ultra hard to do this, is, well, two things. The actual submitted world record on this, Corey, if you look it up, it's on a super gun in someone's living room with a custom controller. <laughs> nice. So, so, uh, and the, the reason that's the arcade record. If, if you, if whose you, record was it? Hans. Oh, okay. Um, the, but the reason where, if you, um, I've been following along some of our podcasts lately, you might have noticed, or if you are a arcade YouTube fan and you've seen the numerous videos with tens of millions of views because Billy Mitchell played on a game that didn't have an original Nintendo joystick, uh, you'll find hypocrisy very fast <laughs> in these Twin Galaxy uh, things. So yes, uh, this was a custom stick, custom setup, full custom game setup, mm-hmm. um, designed to maximize speed, designed, and they gave, and he has the world record. Yeah, on his LCD screen in his living room. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and and the other thing that I remember about that day was um, we're it's all about speed, right? So you know pretty early on if uh, like the computer just randomly decides to block a couple of times, right. then you're not going to get it. So yeah. you need to reset the game. Corey, I am not going behind the machine and pulling out the plug and putting it back in. Uh, you guys taught me long ago that a soft boot is the way to go. Hit the service switch. Although in that, that cabinet, that means squatting down, hitting the service switch, and then setting it again, squatting down. So I just did a ton of squats that day before a pinball tournament. And uh, yeah, I got my quad work in for, for February. Well, Thanks. hopefully Fantastic. you had character change at continue, the dip set to yes. I know it's so bizarre. You're not allowed to I'm use continues, of course. It's, it's, it, it, would, it would violate the rules if you did continue, but you better have your settings to character change on continue to yes. Um, and Han, who does watch our podcast, we're not trying to be mean, um, but like, you know, that's not a real record. Like uh, you, you didn't play on a real game. You didn't play on a real game. Are we doing this or not, guys? Like, I'm so tired of gamers on YouTube being like, we have to take this stuff seriously and then running, you know, I mean, a generally not liked person like Billy Mitchell through the mud. And then we immediately have people who we like who broke every rule and it's fine. So I'll just I, I don't know. I don't not, know. Not, not, that a, not that a custom controller on a super gun is the same thing, but it, it does get tricky with certain games. Like Nintendo had its own stick. But when you get into games that were put into generic cabs, it's like, what's the correct stick for right. that? Like because it was put into so many different well, kinds of cabs and so many different that things. The Nintendo Nintendo stick is not what they actually should worry about but just if it's a four-way stick then your donkey kong should be fine in my opinion i don't care if you have an original nintendo stick like are you following the spirit of the rules are you following useless like semantics and pedantry nomenclature and which is of course still why we all love tournaments same hardware you show up that day you play you see like whether it's a high score tournament or it's a uh um, you know, head to head doesn't matter. Um, yeah, this is the field. We play the game on this field, and we will determine a winner. Yes, it's objective. I I will say that I think it does matter in in the realm of playing well on a Nintendo stick because I'm going to say it right here, right now. I'm going to say playing it on a Nintendo stick feels miserable. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's the thing though. I I went and, and messed around with this. Um, I'm much better at Donkey Kong on a Nintendo stick, probably because I've played it on a Nintendo stick. But I am much better than trying to use any other four-way stick. Um, just the way the metal glides to me, you can hit your hit your ladders, hit your stuff a lot better. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think that that's really interesting, right? Like, so the better question is, what joystick did Han use when he set that record? We have uh, no idea. Was well, it, you can see it in the video. Was it a Saimitsu? We it, don't know. No, it's, 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 it's a custom. Well, right, well, that's the thing. It almost certainly every switch in that thing was totally custom. Yeah. Uh, which is just, so Tekken Tag Tournament, this is an actual contested record. People are actively trying to set this record. I don't know why, Tekken Tag and not Garu. Well, you asked um, me to. No, not you. <laughs> <laughs> People generally. People generally. Like, I, I, it's, we'll Garu it, off later, Chris. It'll be great. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the next day. Ooh, we had a good run. This one was fun. Um, we had an Astros run mm-hmm. at Free Play Dallas. Yes, so Todd Swadinski, who is has been playing Asteroids since back in the day and is an Arlington native, drove to Dallas um, to, to tackle the Asteroids world record. We got all the dips switched straight. We have a beautiful machine there. It's working fantastically. There's something about dra- Asteroids and how bright it is with the with the with that type of monitor. Yeah, you know, the, the so the black and white vector monitor, um, you know, unlike a raster that always draws everything, um, those black and white vectors only draw what it's told to draw, mm-hmm. which gives some incredible brightness, especially those black and white ones. I mean, they're all great, but those black and white vectors um, I love so much more because not only are they ultra bright, beautiful, they are way more reliable than any other color vectors. Mm-hmm. It's, it's light years behind, uh, in front of like a HDR or whatever they have now, which is you know still a step in the right direction, but man, you cannot replicate the look of asteroids any other way than an actual black and white vector monitor. Right. It is just incredible. Now I'm going to need this off track for just a second. So I was reading an Atari um, service manual from way, way back when, and it had to do with asteroids. And the executives at asteroids were really concerned that when it would go to spot killer, um, and it would just have, or it would go to spot, just where it has that one spot with all um, of the gun driven right into the same spot, 
they were worried, and I have not done any research on this, but I have heard weird stories about CRTs like this. They were worried that the um, it wasn't going to catch all of the, the gun and that it was going to shoot, shoot people in the forehead and either burn them, give them cancer. They didn't know what was going to happen, but they were like, this is so bright, it's got to be dangerous. <laughs> like They were like worried about people's eyes. Um, I don't think anything of that ever happened to really happen, but uh, maybe someone in the comments will tell us Asteroids has murdered 3,500 people or something, and it's all been swept <laughs> under the rug by Big Atari um, awesome. while they were, you know, w along with their hotels or something. Uh, uh, I, I doubt it. Uh, the actual listed world record from Twin Galaxies is 41 million, almost 42 million. Uh, that's going to take some time. Right. It's one of those uh, real, real grind it out and possibly kill somebody type of records. <laughs> and I'm not looking to kill... Um, my elder, Todd, Todd Swadinski, who is, who is great and played a lot back in the day. So we, we knew that the world record was not um, within my diabetic friend's possibilities, um, which is another reason why I think these records are absolute garbage. But um, he is a cap capable of playing this game into infinity. So what we did, we sh showed up before open at Free Play um, Dallas that day, set him up, uh, got him a, a water, everything he needed for... Um, for hanging out there that entire day. Got him a stool. Uh, you have to manually count the, the number of times you roll the game because it rolls right. at 100,000. So he has a, a, a place to make hash marks and everything. Nice. Um, and just go at it. Literally all day on one credit from open until close. Uh, made sure to let the host know to make sure that he didn't keel over on the machine. Like... <laughs> we, we did everything we could to have a nice, good, uh, as long as you can reasonably go, Todd, uh, uh, record attempt. So he got 4085000 well short of the 41000000 million, but that's how much you can score if you're playing from before open at Free Play Dallas till close. And, of course, the... Honestly, um, sounds like a pretty good time, too. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. The, the records for Asteroids, and I... I Gosh, why do I always have to be the person who says stuff like this? Are disputed, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, um, there is a certain gamer um, on the Twin Galaxies boards who has been trying to target the um, unverified or the referee verified 1980s scores. And so, in Asteroids in eight, 1982, someone scored 41 million. And so, this player in 2018, while they were knocking off records left and right. Um, so that they, this was going to be their one of their challenge games. They also actually have the world record on Joust and various other games, mm -hmm. um, and uh, broke the world record just by a slight amount and then quit. Um, now there has been again. I have no information on this. Um, uh, this was a fifty-hour or so marathon, and the video is not complete. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that means anything. But I am saying that other people have been concerned about the validity of um, basically Star Castle, Joust, and Asteroids were the three records set by um, this player. And while they clearly seem like a great gamer, there are some gaps. Um, but, you know, there's more gaps in that 1982 record that he beat. So The spirit of, of what these things are, and I've said this before on the podcast, of, of things that I actually care about is a person setting a goal and then attempting to achieve that goal. So... For Todd, $41 million is not in the cards for him. It, it would literally kill him. But reliving his youth, playing that game at an extremely high level, higher than the game. Like, I have a picture of him here with, like, you know, extra lives completely off the screen. <laughs> well, that many lives we'll, we'll put it up on the... Um, well, well, and what, I've, what, yeah. what I will say is, um, for Asteroids and games like that, there have been people, both on Twin Galaxies and other different scoring agencies or gaming groups who have been trying to come up with ways to not have, you know, kill yourself records. Right. Um, and so right a now... timer is all you really Well, need. right now one of the big Asteroids um, records that's starting to gain steam, get a lot of submissions, is the one ship record. You get one ship. When mm -hmm. you lose that ship, it's over. Mm -hmm. um, and that is less than an hour. <laughs> For most people, it's more like 20 minutes. For real. Um, so that's much more doable. Um and and especially yeah, and on games where you can just kind of last forever. Yeah, the, the the strategy there is uh, with asteroids is if you don't know to get it down to one asteroid and then loop vertical loop as fast as you can 
and then sh farm the little guys who come in, the UFOs to shoot them. Right. Shoot them. That's the, where the maximum points are, um, and also you're going to have as little uh, cross traffic with the asteroids as possible. So you, you quickly clear the screen, get it down to one big one, hopefully that's going slow, and then just loop it forever. All right, so following asteroids, we had a Dragon's Lair run. That's right. Uh, Chris Paga is our uh, resident Dragon's Lair aficionado. He's, he's great. Um, he accidentally broke the three-man world record. Um, Dragon's Lair as a scoring game is bizarre. <laughs> uh, it has random scoring, and I'm not even kidding. Right. Um, so he broke the three-man world record. We set it to five men. Which made it so he he struggled from our difficulty setting for a long time Pleasure. before beating it the first time. Once he had beaten it at three man and subsequently broken the world record, uh, the more prestigious I guess world record is five men for some reason. Yeah. But uh, so you set it to to five minutes. Maybe before I was starting, I was officially employed, but I certainly was involved in his his runs. So he's done three man, five men. We believe is not possible. Uh, not legit. Yeah, we've we've talked about this a long time ago on the podcast. So there's not a single um, record for Dragon's Lair that's beyond like 1984. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, we we've all kind of talked about how we can be skeptical of those, but it does seem like they're that's just made up. Like, and and not the second place necessarily, but that first place score. If you do all the math, which I did it a lot, we did it all a long time ago. We worked through the math, trying to understand the random scoring, the different elements you could do. We can't find a way that you could score 558,000 points on Dragon's Lair. Mm -hmm. um, someone should show us that you can. We've got a real one. Come do it. Um, yeah. And but uh, uh, Paga is incredible. He is incredible. Um, so we, we we went with the a speed run. I I really admire these type of uh, runs more than your grind it out forever anyway because it, you get to objectively prove your skill in a different way. Um, a way that's subjective and doesn't involve like just getting to the last difficulty level and staying for three days. Um, that being said, <laughs> Dragon Slayer is not a speedrun game. You just play through it one time, right? <laughs> right. So he, he played through it one time, played through it a couple times, nailed it on the first try. Uh, it was like, I could do it. I could do it a little bit quicker and he did it a little bit quicker and yeah, it was Correct me if I'm wrong, awesome. but there's, there's randomness in which scene is done yep. when and you yep. don't always face the same scenes. The scenes aren't at the same length, correct? That's correct. And also, uh, Dragon Slayer is, is one is significantly harder than Dragon Slayer 2, which is which does not have those random elements. And but, but Paga can handle it. He's incredible. Uh, it's worth a watch. If you wanna if you wanna see him do it live in person, then let me know on a I Wednesday you're coming out to Free Play Richardson. I think you you I mean you you touched on something that I feel too is just like <laughs> there's definitely like a large level of skill involved and a lot of high score stuff uh, with arcades, but it's also just like there's so many games that it just boils down to an endurance test right and it's a big it's reason hard, it's a way. big reason why speed runs have become so much more popular is right. because you know there's not you're not just grinding something you're just trying to finish the game as quickly as possible and and that also means it takes less time uh and it's just like and and then and then you have the problem of high score things i want to mention this thing on twin galaxies because of what you said about asteroids they have in their guidelines, they have a, a rule that says they don't allow leeching, which is also referred to as hunting and point scabbing. <laughs> it, it is, quote, a means by which a player accumulates additional points in the game while engaging in activities that do not contribute to progressing to the next stage, screen, or level. And while such activities are engaged, a player is not inhibited to progressing to the next stage, screen, or level during commission of said activities. Yikes. So sitting there and grinding a, a thing over is technically against their rules. So mm -hmm. if all the Asteroids players are doing that, then they're not following their own rules. But also, like... If you don't, if you don't want players to do that, then you need to stop caring about arcade high scores because <laughs> yeah, that's how that's, you get a high score is you yeah. just grind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a, which, which is really funny too because of course Twin Galaxies was was founded on arcades. Yeah, and and yeah, that that is an arcade tactic that has been used since arcades existed to maximize your score. Interestingly enough, just uh, before we move on from Dragon's Lair, there are no suggested dip switch settings. You can do whatever you want. Cool. Um, so Neat. 
I feel like I'll do a little hacked version and it'll probably be fine and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll set a 2 million score and <laughs> I'll just say that it was referee verified. No, um yeah, so there's no and there are differences. There's um difficulty settings <laughs> in Dragon Slayer. Um there's also uh ways to change which screen it's going to. Um stuff like that. Uh, uh but again, uh we'll keep moving. The next one was uh, a cool game. Yeah, it's Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Um, that's the three-player beat 'em. Beat 'em. Yeah, weird game. Um, we there's a Faulkner. Uh, Simple Interest does a uh, he does a Denton After Dark podcast, and he has been diligently doing this podcast out of free play Denton for years. And uh, we I brought it to him that there is a vacant world record at Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. So all he had to do was get through the game and uh well there's a we went for a i believe a three player any continues which is a record yeah i think that's what it is three player any credit somehow that's a record so just keep on continuing as much right. as you want cool <laughs> beat the game that's the world record it's vacant because it's you know real hardware so um, it's not one of the games that resets your score when you continue that. correct and also a he was doing a podcast. He had um, <laughs> our, our old bartender, Sarah, there uh, in one of her last days. Um, and uh, current tech, Vernon. Uh, and, and this is what I brought to them. Play the game all the way through. Do a podcast about it because there's weird, weird sex toy bots you're fighting in the middle of that, that game. And it's very bizarre. So it's a lot to talk about on a podcast It's by itself. But uh, play it three player. Whoever has the highest score, you play one single credit, and then you, sir, will be the or ma'am will be the uh, world record holder for a single credit run because it is trivial, and all you have to do is just play till game over, which is you know however far you get. And so Vernon got the top score. Vernon played it one more time. We record the whole thing. So if we want to submit it, we can. I, it's up to it's up to Faulkner. He can if he wants to. I don't care. Yeah, and he was kind of it was kind of fun because. Uh, a while ago, I, and I've talked about it on the podcast, and we made posts about it and everything, is our, I said, we will do this because so many people have been... So one of the, the worst things that I've ever done in my entire life was I made sure everyone knew that Freeplay uses authentic hardware, mm-hmm. which then caused other arcades to think that that is a marketing thing instead of just literally what we do. Right. So other arcades have now started marketing, regardless of whether or not they're all authentic or even close to it or use, like, just terrible emulation. doesn't matter. They all say that every arcade now says that they're all authentic. Mm-hmm. You'll walk in, there's a Pandora's box on the first screen, but their website will say they run only authentic hardware. I recall playing... Uh, uh, one of those laser disc games. It was the Lupin laser disc game. Seeing a mouse cursor in a corner at a local spot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was just the, hilarious um, to me. Before there were Dexter's, which is a emulator for just the laser discs. Um, they had made the Daphne, and that caused almost all laser discs to become fake immediately. And Daphne was emulating both the Game Board and the laser disc. What they realized is those versions sucked. They were awful, awful. Um, so what they did is they made Dexter, which just Replicates the laserdisc player, which is probably a good thing. We have a couple of Dexters Since in an ODE for a laserdisc. I have right. zero problems well, with that. Well, and they actually they get really mad when you call it an emulator. Um, they because it's a, a laserdisc replacement. Um, in their mind, it would be no different than if you say in your journey you rigged up something instead of playing a tape, you play uh, MP3 player or something like that, um, which is which is basically like a game feature that has nothing to do with the gameplay. Um, and so, but these early versions, those Daphne's, uh, which we can go play probably 30 in DFW right now, of very rare Laserdisc games that are just Windows boot kind of computer stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, Moonwalker, of course, programmed in assembly by Michael Jackson himself. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> very cool game. Uh, and then next, what do we? Uh, what was the next day? Josh with Spirit Avengers on the ninth. Avenging Spirit. My bad. <laughs> I wrote it bad in the. All right, what's Avenging Spirit? Avenging Spirit is a Jalico game. I love Jalico. Uh, it's a really fun, funky game, which is currently in Arlington. Uh, oh, it got moved around, didn't it? Yeah, I did. You had to bring it to we, we borrowed it when yeah. we did the record. Got it. Uh, what is it? I don't know. We got to figure out where it is currently. Uh, <laughs> we lost it. Uh, but it, but you, you play as a ghost, 
you're trying there's bad guys who are trying to get the ghost energy and you're trying to stop them from getting the ghost energy as well as rescue your girlfriend but you're dead and you're a ghost uh so you can possess all the enemies in the game uh the interesting thing about high score on that uh for one it's one of those games that only has MAME records currently uh but also i i played the game before and i played through it and i've gotten the true ending um and you know so i knew about it but i i knew i probably wasn't going to get the high score or at least i thought i would but i didn't realize how you get the high score until i was playing the game uh and and we did a few runs and as i was playing i was getting better i didn't beat the high score um but I feel like I could get there just with more practice. Uh, basically, I'd all my practice you. was Sorry. the day that we were doing it. Uh, but what what I realized was that is a game where you get so many bonus points at the end of a level for beating it quickly that effectively the speed run is the high score. Right. Uh, because I watched to to learn how to do it better. I watched a speed run video, and the score that the speed runner got was higher than the world record. <laughs> but. Like, don't hold yourself short, man. Like, you say you didn't beat this, the the world record, but you may not have beat the main world record, but it was empty. You, sir. Right. Yes. <laughs> I got the arcade world. And and uh, really cool game. Also really funny. I guess, like, it had a really, like, cult following for the Game Boy version. Yeah, there's a Game Boy version. I didn't know there was a Game Boy version. Well, awesome. if, you ever, if you look up the Avenging Spirit art and then look up the Game Boy original art, it's really funny. It's, just, like, yeah, it's, just, like, it's just like a gangster shooting yeah, a Tommy it's gun. It's a big a contrast. Which, which, to be fair, is like an enemy you can possess, but still, <laughs> <Sure>. like... <laughs> Like, why not put the ghost on the front? Right. It looks like a totally different um, experience. That's awesome. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Arthur, you were next up in Richardson. <laughs> looks like. So a few years ago, some guy was selling new and boxed. Uh, uh, I can't even think of the, the, the board's name, but uh, I got two of them, one with Arcana Heart 3 and one with uh, Demon Bride. Damon Bride, however you want to pronounce it. And I had never even tested Arcana Heart 3 before. Uh, I don't really like the game, but we needed something, and there was nothing there for that. I'm like I don't know, so I put in the, I just put in a random, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Dynamo Cab that we had lying around, and played it for a few minutes, and it's like okay, got the high score, and then I was done. So, I My, think the combo that I learned for Arcana Heart One with Heart seems to still work. That's the only thing I can really tell you about this game, other than the fact that the game's play field is larger than Marvel 2's. So what I'm, what I'm picking up here, and I think is probably the most important lesson, is if you have access to hundreds of thousands of dollars of arcade equipment whenever you want, <laughs> you could break a lot of world records. Oh, accurate. But here's another thing. If you are interested in breaking a world record, you are always welcome to message us, and we can possibly help you make it happen. Even if the game's not on the floor, and we don't have it listed anywhere, there's a reasonable chance that, like the Arcana Heart 3 that was in some box in my office, we might have the game. Also, clearly, a lot of the world records we saw, we, we, we made aren't really all that high, so you can come and try to beat our record. I don't even have a note of what my record was, but I think I didn't even finish the game. I got to, like, the third guy, and, or third third girl, because it's Arcana Heart. They're all girls. That's the game's shtick. And either way, uh, got to the third third opponent, and I'm like, okay, I'm good. I, I did it. World record. And then turned it off. And then... Uh, it looks like we took a day off for the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Super I didn't want to didn't want to compete with the Super Bowl. Plus, I was running a Super Bowl watching party, so we were doing prop bets all day that day. That was fun. Nice. Did Pro you get the high score in the prop? Bets? Probably set a world record. Uh, know, dip switch settings might be interesting. <laughs> I can't remember who won the prop bets. It's been a while. It's Feb February 11th, but it was. I, I can tell you, it was a lot of fun. I love actually, not actually betting money, but just clowning around with prop prop bets because you end up screaming at, you know. Taylor Swift asking her to curse on camera so that you can have your prop bet play <laughs> pay off. And then the following day, I'm not sure if, about this one 100. percent Yeah, it happened. I, th I got, think I that was the right day. Uh, I don't actually remember which day we went, but I um, so I grabbed uh, my son marks. and a um, couple of his friends, and we were at Free Play Dallas um, while I was trying to figure out how we were going to change the layout because we just added a bunch of games um, and. I realized there stands 
Tank Battalion, a incredibly rare Game Plan game, um, N- Namco game that was licensed by Game Plan, uh, probably had an overall production of under 50. Um, and it's actually a pretty cool game, a uh, really good game. So uh, my son and all of his friends proceeded to each get a world record for a few minutes until the next player played. Um, and then I, I beat all of their records and moved on. Cause, and uh, <laughs> my son Sterling is still trying to beat my record. But if you're... Um, if you have a score above 23,000 on Tank Battalion, you and you're listening to this, and that doesn't sound possible because there are very few of these boards, but if you do that, you have the world record because otherwise it's mine. Um, I also think Tank Battalion is a really underrated game. Um, I think all of the Namcos that went to GPI, King and Balloon, Tank Battalion, way underrated because they were top quality you know, programmers making these amazing games, but game plan was, uh, you know, America came in to ruin them. Um, but really, really great. Um, and definitely a lot more meat on that bone. And Tank Battalion just had a main uh, record, no arcade record. Um, so next up, we had Arthur back to playing some Neo Geo stuff. Because that's apparently what I really like to do. Mm-hmm. Real Bout 2 was the last, I think, Fatal Fury game that's like a Fatal Fury game with the, the, the layered... Is it Fatal Fury 7, something like that? Sounds about right. Yeah. Fatal Fury 1, 2, special, Real Bout... <laughs> yeah, it is the seventh Fatal Fury game. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it looks beautiful. It is super fun to play. I have no idea what the uh, the AI does at any point in time. And on the hardest difficulty level, which it had to be set, I could not beat the game on one credit. I The first score that I got was 300,000 some. And I tried repeatedly to do better, and my score went up, but I didn't get any further in uh, into the game because it has a brutal AI, unless, of course, you know how to exploit it, and I didn't have time to figure that out. I love the game. We left it in the sixth slot Neo Geo at uh, Free Play Richardson for, must have been a month, because I think we just took it out uh, this last week. It's a really good game, though. Uh by the way, if you want to play games like Real Bout 2 or L- Arcana Heart 3, Love Max, six stars, six exclamation marks, <laughs> then you should come to Discovery Squad at Richardson because we played both those games more than once. What did you play last night? Fate Unlimited Codes, eventually. Every Wednesday. The coolest games that you're not going to play against you know people you don't know ever. So show up it's super fun well and in all likelihood you probably won't play these games in your life if you don't come on wednesday it's very unlikely um come come april 10th we'll have a martin house pint night that day nice all right so after wait so you're you're, are you telling me we didn't get the world record on real about two no we got it it was empty Mm -hmm. oh good Mm -hmm. good thank god because i was like i was like what is happening to our company we're falling apart calm down um okay uh, and then it looks like the next day, oh, which was Valentine's Day. Yes. Uh, what happened on Valentine's Day? So I went to our best date game, in my opinion, probably yours as well. Let's go jungle. Definitely. So, um, and then that, uh, there was a vacant, any credit, I can't remember which one, any credit, I don't care. <laughs> the, the, the vacant one was the co-op record which it's a date game right. so this is actually pertinent who so, submitted a single player <laughs> yeah. let's Who's go playing jungle? that game single player <laughs> like, so, oh I, man i i and could was it on anyone. emulator <laughs> yeah right i could choose anyone to run for this one because it is it was vacant but i went with uh one of uh, old friends of ours and the most talented couple i could think of in free play history which is uh dylan smith and sandra mejia um, are many, many, many times women's uh, ST champion and Dylan Smith, the champion of like almost every other game in the arcade. Um, so they're very, very skilled at just random games. Not necessarily Let's Go Jungle. Right. They didn't have to be to break this world record, so they did it. Um, and I told Dylan, who tends to get a little bit over the top with these things, that if he wants to break the actual world record, here's that. And if you want to break the speedrun world record, I'm going to put a timer in the corner, too. So I think he got I think he got them all, if I'm not mistaken. I have the video up, and I don't know if he cares about submitting it any more than <laughs> I do. But he does care about doing it. So it, it's only about an hour and 20 minutes of, of play as he just smashed everything for free. Um, Sandra did play, by the way. It's just... 
she played through one time and was was good to go. Yeah, I imagine Sanders being like, "This is a fun game," and Dylan's yes. over there like, oh, like "That's you pretty do much it." I have it, to yes. Like, um, do uh, they have separate categories for the environmental? Let's go jungle as opposed to the. <laughs> Uh, no, no, they do not. <laughs> I, same, I mean, same gun, so I assume. Yeah. Um, and and I do. Uh, I got a note from the producers. Uh, they wanted me to clarify the Dragon's Lair that Chris Paga was doing his run on does use the laser disc. Um, oh yes, it does. So like, I we would never have like a high score run right, on a Dexter um, Dragon's Lair, but actually, even uh, though they are the same, even though they are the same, um, mm-hmm. and, and in fact, the the they have to be the same. Uh, for the uh, re- for the Dexter to work, the laser disc doesn't actually have to be the same. The, the laser disc, as they decay, as we know, um, will be changing how it looks on the screen. We'll be adding stuff. So um, eventually, uh, they will all have to be Dexters or something similar yeah. because those laser discs are just well. And yeah, they're gone. delaminating, um, and that's just how they were made. And I don't have the technology to press fresh laser discs. So until I get that. Um, we, it does seem inevitable that anything that uses a laser disc will lose its laser disc, but it's still very important to use that original game board to preserve how the game was actually played when it came out, not anything else. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah. back to it. Let's Congrat- go jungle. Crushed. Yeah, congrats, Dylan and Sandra, our Valentine's Day winners. And then it looks like we followed up with a awesome game. Um, yes. I didn't see this run. This was on Mappy. Yeah, so Devin, the tech out there, that's his favorite, favorite game. Good and game. yes, I know it's one of your favorite games as well. So he is obsessed with it and won't let anyone who is in the free play Denton vicinity uh, away without knowing how much he loves that game. So <laughs> it's about, you know, again, this is the type of thing that I actually do care about. You care about doing something, then I care about it suddenly because I care about you, right? So Devin was not close to the 2.3 million, but he did show up in his Mappy shirt and nice. uh, put a score on Mappy, of which I can't get to. Um, but I think maybe you could, Corey. If you want to actually like get into a, a, a tete-a-tete with uh, Devin on Mappy. I don't think I've ever made it to a million, but I think I've come close. He did not make it to a million, so you, you can you can do this. But I'd be very very proud of it, but but I am trying to I I'm double checking the verification on the world record cuz I think that 2.3 might be real. I think that might be a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is impressive. Good score. Um okay. Uh oh man. Then we got <laughs> then we have a competitive game to follow it up. We were like, you know, uh, we've dipped our toes in some of these these games. Now we're going to get one that everyone can do a run on because it is a, a real game. I promise it exists. It is a real game. <laughs> um, and we use we use both. Um, we use game really lightly there. Yes. It's going to well, be a local arcade. They have a couple of them usually. <laughs> yeah, so this is the hologram classic from Sega, <laughs> Time Traveler. <laughs> um, let me tell you the most challenging thing about this run how do you film a hologram? Well, yeah, we actually, we, uh, we whenever we do the walkthrough at Dallas, um, I'm like, no, it'll just put put the camera around there. And they're like, uh, it, it's kind of there. And we're like, okay, move on. It was super difficult. Um, the best I could come up with, um, I didn't put this on YouTube like I did the rest of the things. Oh, so the player was Edward Pan again. He's actually extremely talented. And I had been asking him about Time Traveler for quite some time. If you're not familiar with Time Traveler, it's much like um, Dragon's Lair in its format. It plays a terrible movie from <laughs> the early 90s, um, which is, you know, has its early 90s problematic parts as well. Um, but it's displayed on hologram. It's beautiful. It's real. Like, it's real. I can't believe that you have Time Traveler at Free Play Dallas right now. And you can play it, except I don't want to play it because it's a terrible game, but it's beautiful. <laughs> and Ed can play it because... He's like that. So I was like, can you break this world record? It's trivial for you. I promise you can beat the game. That'll be it. We can do a speedrun record also if you want. But how to film it, I don't know. Uh, how to use a series of laptops and stuff. Ended up like mounting my camera and streaming it live on uh, Facebook while also uh, recording it on the laptop because you can't... How can you film him and the hologram and the score at the same time. Look, I did it. I got it done. I don't care, but it's there. Um, he beat the game. Uh, it's the first time I'd ever seen the game. Apparently there's a big old 
mosh pit dance at the end of that game <laughs> with all the actors. I didn't they get look, that far. That's kind of interesting. They looked like they had fun filming that game in every way, and then they just had a big dance party at the end, filmed it, and then that's in the in the end sequence. And yeah, um, that's the game that I always take people to at Dallas, and I'm like, how cool is it? And they're like, no, can I play? I'm like, no, don't worry about that. Yeah, don't don't try that. That's fine. It just looks, <laughs> yeah. just look, it's a time capsule. Yeah, if you want to play it, just ask Ed to come out and play it, because he can beat it and will for some reason. To be um, honest, that's actually how I approach uh, Dragon Slayer 2. <laughs> it's like, I, I want someone else to play it so I can look at it. Yeah, I know no one cares, but... This one also has random scoring elements. In fact, this has whole entire random elements. <laughs> Everything. In so the scenes are random, including a slot machine scene where, or virtual slot machine, where a magical guy comes out during your journey, and a literal slot machine comes up on the screen. And depending on what it gives you, it might um, give you an extra cube to reverse time, an extra life, which is what you want, so that you can farm some more points uh, if you care about points. Um, or it might end the game entirely, just <laughs> like that. And by the way, it doesn't even appear every time. So Ed gave it a couple of tries to get the extra life before he could submit you know, a score he was happy with. And I was like, Ed, look, <laughs> I'm setting it up. Had Matt come out to see if we could figure out how to uh, get, <laughs> get it displayed on screen. Um, but once we're set up, like, like, let's just do this. Do it until you're, you're, you're good and, and satisfied. So... If I was really trying to capture vi video footage from that game, mm -hmm. uh, the way that it works is the projector that gets hologrammed is just this RCA television. Yeah, I mean, you could just take the, the yellow out of it. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Laser just uses composite video, so you could just use a literal composite splitter, send one to the TV, send the other to whatever capture device, but... Yeah. Well, that's how I'll break the world record soon. I'll just plug it Excellent. into my own. I'll so get my I own like controls. I'll if you want to break that world record, you basically have to go to Free Play Dallas. Where the heck else is it going to be? I don't even know. They have yeah. one at um, one local arcade. Uh, and I actually helped talk to them about it. So I don't, I, we don't generally name um, who it is, but it is theirs is cool, too. Huh, um, so nice. uh, DFW, right? Okay. <laughs> For, for some reason, we have two time travelers. <laughs> um, I will say, nice. go play it because it, like it'll it'll probably get moved and rotated off. It's not a great game, but it is very cool. I, I do take someone to see it every single time. I take dates to see it. Like if if they're if they have wide eyes about free play Dallas, like I go straight to Dragon Slayer two and show them that game because you just got to see it to believe it. Um, the next day we were going to do Dragon Slayer two, which is also in Dallas. Um, uh, I, it didn't happen because our desired world record holder got uh, got sick. So uh, Camber, who is uh, a huge, huge supporter of free play, also a huge, huge supporter of Dragon Slayer 2, um, also a cosplayer who was part of our Dragon Slayer uh, anniversary event, who dressed up as Dirk. We had uh, we had plans to get get her out there in her Dirk outfit once again with her whole troop. Uh, they're actually doing a convention, uh, Fake Con, out in Arlington. Uh, coming up soon. With the after party at Free Player Arlington. Correct, correct. So, like, definitely a big fan of Camber. She's a huge fan of this game. And so is Ed. And so is Chris Paga. So there was, like, it was actually a hotly contested world record run within Free Play. I wanted to do it with Camber. And uh, and she got sick. And I was just like, well, we'll do this another day. So we'll, we will get back and, and break the Dragon's Lair 2 world record, which is trivial. But uh, also, who breaks it is is that's contentious. That's fair. Mm -hmm. They can all break it. They can all break it easily. <laughs> and 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 three of them actually care. All right. So next up on the list, we have Josh on cool mini game. Did it happen? Oh yeah. I definitely. I knew I could beat the world record on this one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the because the world record uh, on Twin Galaxies was two hundred. And 28,000. And I knew that previously my high score setting on our high score list on Facebook was already higher than that. <laughs> um, I, can, I want to talk about a, a little bit about the process of how I did, did this because this you can use this too to try to beat my record. Um, basically, it's just it's a series of mini games. If you've not played cool mini games, it's a series of mini games. Aptly named. And the way it works is you have three hearts. If you fail a game, you lose a heart. But some games will also have certain conditions that will get you a black mark. If you get a black mark, you lose an extra heart. 
So you can succeed at the game, but still get a black mark, nice. and so still lose a heart. Um, the the trick is that every approximately it varies depending upon the game, uh, but approximately every two games it will increase the difficulty of everything. Some games will get harder after only one. Some games will take like four to get harder. Um, so what you have to do, and it takes a long time, and I have some pictures of, of, of uh, a layout of this, is you have to go through, you have to play every game. And you have to figure out, these are the games I am terrible at. These are the games I'm okay at. These are the games I'm really good at. And then you just put them in order which I had a bunch of little cutout pieces of paper that I was manu- moving around as I tried to figure out my order. And I, I like have a, have a thing written down here where I was like, all right, this is what approximately if I put this game here, you know, the quota is this number. And just like, you know, put the easier, the games that you have are, are better at at the end because that difficulty is going to be higher. So you want to save the stuff you're good at for later and do the stuff you're iffy at first. And yeah, I, I did that. I did a few runs, and then the one where I beat the the world record, I didn't even. I messed up on one game I'd never messed up on before, and uh, you know, got a black mark on another. So if I did that better, I could totally get a higher score even. And and also like I got to the end of my list, and I still had hearts left. So at that point, like, you know, I was just trying to pick something. If I made my list a little longer, figured out my stuff better, and did better on those games, I could totally get a higher score. Which, like, so I ended up with uh, three hundred and forty-nine thousand. So that's like a hundred twenty thousand more than Twin Galaxies' record. Which, again, their record's only on Mame anyway. <laughs> um, and even uh, um, if you look at Marp, which is like Mame action replay, so still just Mame. Their, their world record is 373,000, which I think I could beat that as well. I think that I could get maybe 400,000. One thing I want to point out, though, is that my world record score is only fifth on the default number. <laughs> number one is 500,000, which I do not think is actually possible. <laughs> because the games will just get too hard that you cannot possibly finish the game in the amount of time that they give you. The, the person who got assigned like the UI and everything at the end of the game was just like, I'll just put some scores in this and, and populate this. <laughs> and didn't actually. That's funny. But yes, I definitely beat the high score in there. And then... We had a substitute. Um, yes. So I, I, I can get this one for you. Well, you know who was supposed to do it. Um, but the Simpsons uh, arcade game, another one of those vacant world records. So uh, a four-player version of it for uh, at that. So anybody who plays the Simpsons, four players all together, one credit, <laughs> can get that world record. And we have it at Free Play Richardson. So uh, our camera guy, Matt, grabbed uh, Jessica, the admin assistant from here. Charles was involved, and so was uh, Michael Pate. Yep. I was like, I can't do it. Staff, someone help. And staff <laughs> went and did it. They broke the world record. Yep. Simpsons, four-player simultaneous. Um, yeah, let's see. It's about 160, which I think I can get as a single player. But that's right. the four-player record. That's it. And that's that's all you got to do. Just go to to Free Play Richardson and, and give it a whirl. Congrats have, to Matt. I think we have Simpsons in other places, but I don't. Those Konamis, um, they yeah. get the best of me. All right, after that, I so, think we have it in Fort Worth, but I'm not really. We sure. Sure, we yeah. certainly do. We probably have, we should have three or four. But after that, we have a gap. I would like to call ticket stock. Ah, yes. Which so, is um, uh, there, and there is a couple videos, or at least one on our YouTube, more coming um, of us getting ready for that. Mm-hmm. It, we didn't think we were doing it this year, but we did it. So yep. it, it kind of uh, got in the way of stuff. So we had a gap. Yeah, we had uh, bad bad timing with uh, with ticket stock. We were there. I do have one uh, world record attempt to report that day, uh, and this one was actually pretty controversial. One of the ones that I got. Okay, so this is really insane. Multiple people reached out to me to break the world record on Pac Land. <laughs> Why multiple what? people? Do you mean uh, Beltran multiple times? Right. No. <laughs> Although he's certainly one of them, but I felt bad because I think we have someone who could legitimately give it a shot. Also, 
that game is the one that Michael Beltran wanted to make his exemption for COVID era to never rotate oh, right. off the floor. Also, that one got fan voted to <laughs> rotate off the floor. <laughs> right. I, I picked five games from each location, and everyone got to vote. And whatever got the most votes was gone. And everyone found out that Michael Beltran liked Pac-Lan, and they were like... <laughs> If he would have said nothing right. rather than... <laughs> he did it to himself, guys. Or if he would have said, this game's terrible, and talking about any other games. So, <laughs> but yeah. Please don't vote for Pac-Land. Oh, it's gone. So I'm at Ticket Stock, and uh, Kid Christopher Reed is there, and uh, Mike Bandano, and of course Michael Beltran, and Pac-Land. So we gave it a good, good shot. Uh, he did not break the world record. Like I said, I do think we have someone in our midst who could could give it a nice shot. Uh, he's very good at the game, by the way. Uh, I, I really, I only play it to giggle at the swastikas on the hubcaps of the cars. <laughs> Check it out when you play Pac-Man. No. Uh, oh, Pac-Land, Pac-Land's really fun um, and and ridiculous. Uh, in fact, there's a fairy in it. It's so weird. I was trying it's to get the, weird. I was trying to pull up the Twin Galaxies record, and the very first discussion on it was Pac-Land is so weird. <laughs> and it, it, it went through things like all of the gameplay feels weird. It feels like it's unpolished. I think they just made it, and they were like, "I'm not saying that it was just basically painted uh, sprites, but they just look not great." And then they were like, "The music is weird." And then they're like, "Also, the ghosts are flying around aircraft and cars, and you're like so uh, weird. dropping baby ghosts on you from the air." <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> And it's just, it is kind of funny because while there are, you know, not necessarily all of the Mario games are all time great, um, Pac Man does have to, it is one of those um, uh, franchises that has had a lot of quality issues <laughs> over the years. Speaking of Mario, though, like, this doesn't get enough mention, I don't think, but Pac Man beat Super Mario Brothers by, like, a year. It's, it's very forward thinking. I wish that they hadn't gotten the buttons so wrong. You know what? Do you, what do you? What control structure do you think about when you think of Pac-Man? Uh, a four-way joystick. Yes, <laughs> and that's what they used, right? No joystick. If only. I do like to ride. Guys, mic joysticks about. are expensive. Buttons are cheap. <laughs> Save some money. Throw buttons only. I just, Ugh. I just like to ride Mike about not using authentic Pac-Land joystick and watching his <laughs> brain melt. <laughs> It was weird, um, and you can kind of tell that they thought that this was going to be a big game for the Pac-Man um, existence. You could tell. I mean, they put a lot of money into that I game. Mean, it's it's a there's interesting really interesting it. looking scrolling platformer when in an era where that genre doesn't exist yet. Well, and if I'm in an arcade and they have a Pac-Man, I'm not complaining. I'm like, no. wow, this is a weird arcade. I'm in. Yeah. Like whatever's happening here, they 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 click because there's no one who would put Pac-Man in there accidentally. There's a ton of secrets in that to, game too, like secret ways to. Move, move around it. fire hydrants by pushing them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of like a uh, Castlevania two, right? Yeah. Just like very, very not described in the manual ways of, of beating the game. Uh, and and there's a again there's a fairy and he gives you special Nikes that let you fly true, and like man. I don't understand what's happening. I it's just Pac-Land. laugh at Mike. Uh, yeah, we feather cap. We skipped around a few days there because of because uh, of ticket stock and Arthur's trip. And uh, we got back at Arlington, Free Play Arlington, and our old um, old friend, Free Play Emily, played Splatterhouse. Which I was there for. Okay, so you can tell us about because I, I was not. <clears throat> so Emily was, like, trying to learn Splatterhouse speedrun uh, before, um, and she did not, like, really get close to uh, the speedrun. Um uh, she didn't even uh, do her best time because I know that she's done it in like about 40 minutes. Uh, the video that we did ended up being less a speedrun video, more like a let's play video of, of Splatterhouse. But uh, to be fair, um, uh, so the speedrun, most of the, all the speedrun records for the arc, there are speedrun arcade ones, um, but they, they do allow arcade MAME and uh, the Namco Museum version all under arcade um so uh those are all like 13 and a half minutes um which i i watched one on, on gdc one year and i don't remember uh what controls they were using uh but it's like if they're you know if they're doing it at home they could theoretically just be playing with like a 
you know, pad or something, right? Right. Uh, the trick to the speed run of that game is that you have to do the slide kick all the time, which is a really weird timing and button execution and much harder to do on joystick. So, like, to be fair to Emily, like, we had put that game in a Blast City for her, and she mm-hmm. never played on a San Juan stick or anything. Uh, but also, like, as far as her practicing the game, we only we generally only put that game out during Halloween, so she only gets to practice a little bit of time. And every time we put it out, it's pretty much in a different cabinet, so always playing with different controls. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's still... You know, she took a run at it, and 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 we, you know, we had a fun time uh, playing through the game. And yeah, it's just like if you want to if you want to learn the speed run to uh, Splatterhouse, really just learn how to do the slide kick consistently. That is the main thing. Well, and in fact, uh, the record holders in Splatterhouse, according to these threads that I'm reading, all have created custom controllers <laughs> just to make Splat- for Splatterhouse runs. And in fact custom ROMs to make it easier to run. Twin um, galaxies. I feel like I feel like the GDC run I I think was actually on arcade hardware and I think they might have been using a joystick. Not for a for the one the one that I saw. I don't I I don't remember for sure on the joystick, but I think they were actually playing on arcade hardware for that at least. But yeah, it's just like the slide kick not only is faster, but it does more damage than any other attack. So it's like things that might take two or three hits to kill, you can kill in one slide kick. So it's just like, that's the key to getting through the game is learn how to do a slide kick. But it's just so hard because you have to like jump and then you know, on the landing, you have to hit exactly like diagonal and like the attack at exactly the right time. It's very difficult. Yeah, and now I'm reading a very long discussion on whether or not super guns should be permitted um, in these runs. And then they're like, well, but this board was hacked, too, and he's also using hacked controls. Is that okay? Eventually they decided, yep. <laughs> sure, why not? So the score cool. is still there. They, they adjudicated <laughs> it, and they said, I don't know, it's fine. Um, as I mean, as you kind of have to in some ways, if you have a trillion records you're trying to monitor, you're not going to be able to, like, actually um, truly adjudicate almost anything. Um but yeah, it is it is really funny. You can apparently build custom controllers, custom joysticks, hack anything you want, and just get all the world records. Um, so that is uh, what's going on with the Splatterhouse world records. But that's, that's on Twin Galaxies. That is on Twin Galaxies. Right. You're right. The, I was the, looking the, at speedrun.com. The speedruns are, are obviously um, probably Which more forgiving more, about yeah. how you play the way you want to play. Well, and, and probably uh, for games like that, probably better. Um, okay, what's next? Uh, we went Dead. back to free play Richardson and Tetris the Grand Master. Ah, nice. Yes. Um, we have maybe the best Tetris player in the state of Texas, not Oklahoma. Um, Ed Bradburn uh, in the area. He won our Spring Series Tetris tournament way back when. And has, um, he's just been an avid puzzle game supporter and even creator here locally um for he, years he's very 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 he's good at so puzzle good. games <laughs> he's so good so he does not get there's a lot of rng to tetris the grandmaster one in the arcade um as you might guess from tetris but he's extremely good so um, is it unclaimed no why does when i click the platform mame is the only thing i can pick I'll find it. Sorry. Maybe, it maybe it is on Twin Galaxies. Yeah, that's fair. As as someone who... I legit- imagine Tetris has its own stuff. Yes. As someone who legitimately cares about Tetris, uh, Ed Ed knows quite well what the best ever in, you know, probably set in Japan is. Um, and knew that was uh, not realistic. Uh, it would take perfect RNG across all those Tetris pieces to e- achieve it. But... Uh, what he did was we streamed it all live, and he gave it a good shot. He got the Grandmaster rating, which is, if you've ever seen... There are people coming around the arcade just, like, staring at him in awe. Basically, if you've ever seen somebody play Tetris where the pick, the, the moves, the uh, pieces are going instantly down in an arcade and disappearing, it looks like a, a TAS robot is doing it. It's not a TAS robot. Ed can actually do that, and it's uh, breathtaking. He beat the game. He got Grandmaster rating. Uh, and then I requested that he try for a secret grade, which is to put a diagonal line inside the Tetris wall as it grows up, goes up, as it gets to level 999 uh, and back again. Uh, put a design in it, and uh, he got his best secret grade score ever. It was, I believe, 
It was S something. I don't S6. Know. There you go. to the notes. S6, which is phenomenal. And like I said, there was a crowd gathering around uh, Ed. And uh, he was happy uh, to know at the same time that we were planning to bring back Puzzle Night. So Yeah, Ed's Puzzle already... Night is coming back, guys. So yeah. if you're in DFW area and you're like, I just want to play puzzle games at the arcade, that's about to happen. We're going to have some cool prizes, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, it's going to be a sponsored event series. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And Ed Bradburn, one of those great gamers who could win all of them, but won't. Um, yeah, well, he's very good at Tetris, the Grandmaster, and loves puzzle games. Right. So it's not it's about playing the game. He has an actual good, um, good time playing all the games. There's actually someone who goes to Discovery Squad who is all world at uh, Vampire Savior that I feel the same way about. He's just going to play the game with you. So it's awesome. So then... We're coming towards the end of February. And and what I'm hoping uh, uh, we're getting across is this was a really great event. So if you're like an arcade regular, you are active in the arcade community, or you own an arcade, this was actually a really nice community involvement um, project. Um, and, and basically encouraging a lot of people to just play games, um, find, find scores that they wanted to beat, and see if they could. Um, that worked out really, really well. Um, it gave us all sorts of ways to, to engage with people who don't necessarily play those competitive games um, that are direct com- competition games. So I think that this worked out really, really well. And then, so uh, there was a game you were trying to get someone to make a run on. Yeah, so it's February 26th. I'm almost dead at this point. Uh, it's also Grimm's first day. I was super happy about that. Uh, but I had a lot to do with uh, with with uh, onboarding a new employee and many, many other things. So I had requested someone uh, break the world record on Strider or at least give it a good shot. I had one person uh, reach out to me. It was Pedro Gonzalez. And what's his DJ name? DJ, ah. I have to find it in the notes. I got it. It is Master Blaster Priest TD, who is a DJ for Let's Play Game Expo. Um, nice. So yeah, we set him up on Strider, and I love that game. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful at Free Play Dallas. Um, it is. Uh, it's got one of the best soundtracks. It's just that that game is a blissful time, and it's just kind of like hiding in the lines there at Free Play Dallas. Uh, gets walked past way too often because you should be on that game playing. It's the original Strider. It was amazing, uh, and and Pedro was not. So we didn't break the world record. Um, Which is 365,000 points, it says. Right, and and you can't loop that game. I thought it might be a looping game. You, you cannot. Um, so we found some weird quirks about this game, though, uh, while we were doing it. There are optional boss rooms where you can fight other bosses from the game uh, in other areas, and they score no points. Yeah. It's so weird. The scoring sequence, the scoring on Strider is just bizarre. Uh, that 365,000 um, point score has now been tested and is impossible. Still the world record impossible, though. Oh, well. Cool. There you go. So, yeah. They did it. Yep. But he, did the, he did it. He beat the game. And that's really all I wanted to see was someone skillfully play through Strider. And he absolutely did that several times, chasing this impossible record. Do you know what his score was? Uh, I got the video, so I'd have to check the video this day. Because someone who was grumpy about that score submitted 112,000 and was like, it's legit, though, Um, and Twin Galaxies still still didn't remove it. It's it's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So Twin it, Galaxies. Well, it's just um, it. I actually so like from a kind of um, investigative um, perspective, I always love looking up the records and seeing what people have thought about over them. Because mm-hmm. I actually, you know, it's maybe as a lawyer or whatever is wrong with me deep inside, seeing people fight about stuff is awesome. Um, and so I think that's one of the reasons I love Twin Galaxies so much in the uh, its terribleness is all of the disputes, all the fights, all the talking about things that I love, these arcade games. Um, so I actually think that that was kind of a big bonus for me during February was figuring out all of the ways that people had fought over the games we were trying to run. Um, but Strider is, uh, it sounds like Strider is possible, um, not not the fake one, I, not the fake record, but it, it seems like the real one is I, probably possible. I, ta- I talked to Pedro about it, and we were kind of workshopping the record as we as he played through it, and and like you got to think about like point pressing. Of course, we were going for the three hundred thousand something, 
Um, there was meat on the bone there. Uh, he had never really tried to point press in that way, though we were working on some techniques as, as we went along. But it was, it was still a lot of fun. And he knew quite a bit about Strider. He's a, a fan enough to have, you know, all kinds of posters and original artwork up and stuff. And uh, a quirky thing about that game, five spoken languages in it. Five <laughs> different spoken languages. Well, and apparently you can you can run the game in like if you're doing a speed run, you can get it done in under ten minutes. Yes, and I pointed that out to him That's and awesome. told him I would I would record that as well, but you're not catching that one because that is a skillful run. That's that's probably a lot of um, important calculations have gone yeah, into. That's it. that's that's where I think world records are interesting in in these games. Right. Well, and that's I mean I I think the the cool thing about games like Strider or these more obscure and rare arcade games is a lot of them have had speed runs that are very hard to get but not impossible like there's a, there's a, there's other games right that you're not going to get if you if you started today to try to catch the Mario 64 speed runs or anything like that no <laughs> like uh, like no it's just not going to happen but those i think that they're they're certainly doable um and and still really interesting and cool records where you can learn so much about the game and i that's something that a lot of people have come up to me before and just been like i don't really care about getting really good at the games but there's something really special that happens when you do get really good at a game um, because it becomes comfortable, right? You, you get comfort from doing it. You can um, basically go live in the game a little bit. You're not, you get to the point where you're not just always constantly worried about dying or constantly worried. You get to go really explore these games where these you know, really, really great game developers um, put their lives into it um, and, and often did a lot of work there that's gonna go unappreciated until you get good at the game. Um, so that's one of the things that I really liked about this is um, all of these players getting to challenge themselves and play these games potentially in a way they haven't, and I bet they're all much better at these games now that they've had just you know forced themselves to run a little bit extra. All right, then we had another fighting game. So we were going to have another fighting game. <laughs> this is uh, so the twenty seventh game scheduled was X Men versus Street Fighter. And that game was actually rotated off for Splatterhouse so that we could do the... <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <the anime. laughs> so, uh, Jerry, Jerry Garcia, we can get the X-Men versus Street Fighter world record later uh, if you care. And I know he doesn't. I, cle- <laughs> I, I clearly care. I need, I need all of them. No. Um, and, and some of this was also, uh, for many years now, anything that's been like a retro contest... Um, the players who come to free play ha- in DFW have won it, um, mm-hmm. and, and it hasn't been close. Um, and, and one of the things that hasn't happened lately, though, is after COVID, there weren't a lot of those. Like we used to have Let's Play, for example, and there's the mm-hmm. famous photo of the Let's Play finals, and they did. It was such a cool <laughs> event. Bunch of bunch of free um, play shirts. But then, yeah, uh, the top six were all in free play shirts. The top three on the stage were all just sitting there in free play shirts, and, and they just yell. I mean, you ended up winning that, I believe. Um, yes, because and, I happened to have played their secret game Mega Man One at QuakeCon the week before. Nice. Well, and that's that's the thing. It was. Um, when it comes to like this more overall gaming skill, not necessarily a specific game, but just like being able to play lots of games, anyone who's a regular free play probably has an advantage anyways mm-hmm. um, because you've probably been exposed to a lot of different games or games change all the time. Um, and so this was also a nice thing to do during February to try to, you know, remind some people that, you know, the absolute top arcade gamers in the world come to free play. Um, and and one of the re- one of the big criticisms about that is you know you don't have enough world records or anything like that and and we have been speaking a lot about how valueless some of this is but um, <laughs> it, what the whole point was we can break world records left and right um, our gamers are great we can win tournaments left and right too like whatever the rule set you want to put in front of us we'll, we'll do pretty well like I said there's a certain pinball player who used to be first in the world um, and then you have the bonus game. It was because this was a leap year. Yes. So there were we had a uh, a Frogger run the last day on on the 29th. I assume they didn't break the world record. They did not break the world Frog, record. Frogger this is, is a, a pretty maxed game. Yeah. So I I did want to. So this is actually one of Ed Edward Pan's uh, better games that he actually plays and has the the arcade record at. So I, I sought him out and I was like, "Can you do a, ro- a Frogger record run?" And he said, "Yes, absolutely." And I was like. All right, it has to be on leap day because it's Frogger. Right, <laughs> and he had he had, a, he had to be out of town that day. So we had a cosplay event, uh, the Intercalary Cosplay Fantasy, I believe it was at Free Play Denton, which, by the way, very cool. Uh, the way they transformed that place was awesome. Um, so I, I got cosplayers and shout outs to uh, Lucas 
and I'm not sure what Lucas's uh, cosplay persona was that day, but like uh, willing to put in the effort on Frogger, and uh, I got some cool pictures of cosplayers going for the world record at, at Frogger, and it, we did not get it, yeah. sadly, <laughs> sadly. But we did play Frogger on Leap Day. Felt felt important. Oh, well, it seems seems like a nice way to wrap it up. Um, make a run at a game that's almost certainly not going to happen because those of that that's oh. been point maxed over and over and over. Frogger's one of those games that you have to play for seventy hours for the record, isn't it? Mm. I have no idea how long the actual. Um, let me see. I've got it. I just know that the Costanza record was indeed achieved. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, well, that wasn't I, that high of a score, though. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not easy. Let's not. It yeah, was, I'm not good at it. Yeah, it's 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 not like this it's is. It's one of those games, I believe, with a, only a few levels too, and it's really really wonky how you have to progress in that game, backtracking intentionally, racing against the clock. Difficult game for sure. Well, and it looks like for arcade on Twin Galaxies, at least the only um, records that they're tracking are set to tournament settings. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. But they aren't just tracking people in tournaments, although there are a lot of people who. Automatically had scores submitted because they played in a turn a uh, Frogger tournament. So oh yes, fun. yes, yes. That's that is the thing. Yeah, they'll 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 close it off, make it to where you cannot actually submit a score unless you were to go back in time and go to a random Midwest tournament at a single arcade. Well, I tried to Legit. watch the video. It says it was verified on video and that there's a video, but it is not available anymore. Um, I just wanted to see how long it took. What, uh, it, what is the world record? Well, the, on tournament settings, it's 900,000 approximately. Eight, 896, 980. So you say George's w- w- score isn't that high, but was his was 860,000. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, that was like just over 100,000. No, no, no. Okay. It was okay. It was considered, it, for a long time, people wondered uh, it w- whether it was possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was, I think we even said, I think I offered some peop, someone something to try yeah. to break it, and no one did. Yeah, we've we've offered bounties on the Costanza score, a billion points on Nibbler. And similarly on Nibbler, we got a player, uh, Brand, uh, no, it wasn't him. Um, we got a player who was able to play for five straight hours on Nibbler to the point where it maxed out the difficulty. And then it was just like I don't I don't want to do this. And the and also the dig dug score from Stranger Things. I remember right. that. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that one was that one got absolutely crushed. And the cool thing now um, is if you're listening to this, we do like to play these games and we like to see them played at a really high level. So we've spent a lot of time today trashing records, trashing um, verification organizations, trashing um, the situation we find it, found find ourselves in. But what I would say to you if you're listening to this. And you're like, I want to set a world record of free play. Seriously, do reach out because uh, we will um, facilitate as best we can. And yeah. we also do actually have legitimate hardware. Whether or not that matters uh, for the site you're to, like trying to submit it to, we can deliver you the real thing. Yeah, send me an email, chris at freeplayinc.com. Uh, I am not interested in doing a world record run every single day again. But I am very interested in, in giving it a good shot every month or so. And uh, we've got some lined up already, and uh, I, I think that's going to be a staple. Like, let's let's just give it a, a shot. If you're interested, go ahead and send me that email, Chris at FreePlayInc.com. Uh, if you've already broken it and you just need to do it on the on the arcade hardware, I, I got you. Um, yeah. Well, and, and and depending on how serious you're taking it, um, and how kind of the uh, big the record might be in the arcade world, we can we can scale up our seriousness. So if you're like, I want to do something that is hotly contested but i need battery backup stuff like that hit us up we can see what we can do we can't do it every day we can't just make it happen instantly but we can um we can certainly if you're telling me that you're gonna score more than a million points on donkey kong because that still hasn't happened at free play um then we could probably probably help you out there don't don't you dare try to beat my world record on cool mini games cool mini games um, off, off the floor well, it was really fun. Is cool mini games for so long was the rotator. Like it was because nowadays we, at most arcades we have backup games um, on site. But um, for a long time, cool mini games would just pop up <laughs> at, at the different arcades, and it would always be popular for like a week. And so that was like the, the best move ever. Was every week move cool mini games, and people are gonna find it and have fun. Um, but I do think your record's safe. I will say I also uh, beat the world record on Kira Kira Star Knight yesterday because it's literally not what? listed on. Hold it's hold literally on. not listed at all on Twitter. I also <laughs> beat the record. Oh no! <laughs> What's your score? What's your oh, score? No. Uh, Ninety-eight seventy-one. Hang on, mine was ninety-eight seventy-one. Yep. Uh-oh. Did you play in advanced? No, I played on normal. 
9871. I got 2178. That's wow, less. you're way better. That's less. You're a <laughs> new world Kira, record Kira holder. Champion. Actually, okay, so I, I cannot actually tell if that first that first is it a number nine or might a be a 3. It's either a 3 or a 9. I'm going to say it's a three so that I will feel better. <laughs> hang Arthur, on, hang on. So it might, it might be 3871. It might be 3871. But, uh, but which character were you playing? I was playing. I was playing the default that couldn't do the high okay. jump. Yeah, I was doing. I was playing freestyle. <laughs> Every obscure game you can think of. Clearly, we can cover. So uh, message Chris if y'all want to do a run. This has been the Free Player Arcade Podcast. Um, just wrapping up our February high score project. Um, and in the meantime, make sure you hit subscribe. We do have content coming out again, and it has been coming for a couple of months, and we're just going to keep making more, and I think we have some really cool programming coming as well. So, again, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the channel. Um, it does help you see our stuff, and as we make more, you'll want to see it all. So, until next time, we are signing off from the Free Play Arcade headquarters. See you next time.